To achieve a harmonious relationship between employers and employees, Parliament by Act 651 of 2003 established the National Labour Commission. The Commission is an independent body meant to adjudicate labour disputes and ensure a favourable industrial environment for employment sustainability and then growth. Today on Hot Issues, we ask if the Commission has lived up to its expectations 21 years since its establishment. The responses to that question vary depending on who you ask. Labour on one hand accuses the Commission of taking government side and not being proactive. But could there be more than meets the eye? In this episode, I sit with three-time NPP Kade MP and current Executive Secretary of the National Labour Commission, Ufusu Asamoa. You're welcome to Hot Issues. Thank you. Your mission as the National Labour Commission, and I read to you, is to develop and sustain a peaceful and harmonious industrial relations environment through the use of effective dispute resolutions. For organized labour, uh, the perception is different. Why do you think that is? Perception is different. Mm -hmm. That you haven't managed to effectively uh, deal with issues on the labor front. I disagree. I disagree. How so? Because we've done our best to achieve this mission by resolving issues that come before us and keeping a quiet industrial front. You have seen that um, for the past six, seven years, there hasn't been um, any serious turbulence at the industrial front. Well, there have been rumors of wars or rumors of strikes, you know, and uh, most of them which has come has been very unsuccessful. It tells you that um, we have managed it well. Mm. Yes. In managing it well, the perception has been that the National Labor Commission has always uh, been on the side of the largest employer government. That is not so. How many issues come up against the government? It's just in a few cases of the Ghana Medical Association, the university teachers, and in recent time, the pre-tertiary um, unions, that is not NAGRAT and the consent teachers. Represent. But you see, when we talk about industrial front, it is not just about government. Government is not the largest employer. The private sector is there. We have had many cases from the private sector. I mean, the industries, the commerce, the decent trade, that trade unions. We have dealt with mm. it. So I don't think that well, uh, but the, bank, the banks, the insurance companies, even here, TV3. But in, in, uh, in respect uh, to... Uh, so, in, in, in respect to um, you know, the public sector workers. Yes. Um, it would appear that National Labor Commission is always on the side of government. And I'll give you an example. No. Uh, what they tell us is the fact that National Labor Commission will sit down, things will happen over and over again. The moment they take action, then National Labor Commission will say that your strike is illegal. It's illegal, yes. That is the unfortunate aspect of it. A union has an agreement with the government by way of collective agreement. Perhaps it has to expire within a year or two. When it expires, they are expected to sit and renew it. Or assuming you have a demand, which by way of it, you have petitioned the employer, which may be government. What next? You wait for the government to respond. If there is no response, or there is no a renewal of the agreement in its due date. A party must notify the other, right? And then negotiations may begin. If negotiations begin, in the unlikely event, or let's say you are unable to negotiate and agree, one party or both, right, when you hear the decision, must report the case to the National Media, uh, Labor Commission, mm -hmm. right? Then, as our duty, we facilitate settlement of issues, right? Perhaps assisting the negotiation. Where there is a need to appoint a third party, a mediator, to assist the parties who are unable to agree, 
the Labour Commission will do that. If there is the need for an arbitration, right, of which the party, you know, is voluntary, we will explain it, then we give you the list of arbitrators for you to choose who you want, so that at Indeed. least you have trust in whoever is arbitrating or the panel that is arbitrating, so that the award will be acceptable to you. If the commission will have to set an arbitrate on it itself. But you see, what the parties normally do is, they don't follow the order. that when they hit the wall by way of negotiation, then they say, then we are declaring a strike. Now, strike is legal. It's one of the tools that is available to the unions in the pursuance of their welfare matters, right? But there is a procedure, the law provides, that if you want to resort to a strike, you have to write to your employer and then give notice to the National Labor Commission for a period of not less than seven days, right? Now, let us look at the, the strike that happened, I think, uh, somewhere last year for the pre-tertiary mm -hmm. um, schools. Now, they, were de they declared the strike on a Friday, there was no notice to the commission. And the strike was declared by a press conference. The law does not provide... If you is, want, that, is, is that not notice enough to employer? If you call TV3, you call the other radio stations and say that they have declared a strike, today is Friday from Monday, no teacher is going to school. Between Friday and Monday, how many working days do you have? How many working days do you have? Well, I mean, it goes without saying. No, no, no. I mean, no, let's... This, you, you, this is what issues. Well, I, People are listening to I, us. No, we are... No. Well, I want to respond to you. I yes. don't know what their working schedule is that no, is, is like. I cannot say that because it's Saturday and Sunday, I don't work Saturday you, and Sunday. You, so. you, you were in JSS or SS or secondary I'm school. I'm responding to your question. No, no, you are going around no, it. Okay, you, 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 know. you asked me how Very many well. working days are, are there. And I'm yeah. telling you, I okay. don't know their work schedule. And so I cannot say that because it's a weekend, they are not working. Perhaps Saturday, Saturdays and Sundays are part of their work schedule. Very well. As you mean Saturday and Sunday are part of their working days. From Friday to Monday, mm -hmm. how many working days will you have? Those are about five working days. And the law says seven. So are they in compliance? Mm. Now, the law says, send notice to the National Labor Commission, right? So if you call a press conference or you call some two press men, perhaps you may not even be talking to a big station like this, but you go and talk to some small, small stations as you call them, we have declared a strike. So clearly... Would that be notice? Will you be complying with the law? So clearly, there is a problem. My so that, is, why, why so that where there's non-compliance, normally we even we write to you that, yes, this is what we have done is wrong. So this is what the law says. And it is only when you ignore us. And the law says that when you ignore or fail to comply with the directive of the National Labor Commission, we seek enforcement in the court. Indeed. So we don't just jump and go to court. Indeed. We'll get there. You know, the, seeking, so the legality or otherwise of a strike normally is by the court. I mean, if we said it was illegal and we were wrong, when we go to court, the, the courts will tell us that no, it is legal. And we'll come and sleep. Very well. Why do you think that um, these public sector workers particularly um, do what they do, how you have explained? That is the unfortunate aspect of it. That is the unfortunate aspect of it. I remember some time ago there was a declaration of strike by the University Teachers Association, which would not comply with um, the law. So I asked myself, you see, and I, I don't know whether it is deliberate sometimes that they want to do that or for whatever reason, because this is not, when you read the law, it is not technical, one of those technical terms in law with all the Latin language. It is simple English language. And you see, the case? and the union leaders, that we have are people who have been leaders for all day and they know the law. So sometimes I really wonder. But is it the case that it's, mm. it's a symptom of eroded trust between employer and employees? Yes, I think there's a high level of mistrust between the unions and the employers. And even with the National Labor Commission? 
that it, it, it only trickles down to us when we try to enforce. You see, sometimes the government also complain. Employers complain, especially those in the mining sector. They think that once they have been hauled before the National Labor Commission, in most cases, they might lose their case. So it's like, that is why sometimes I say that then we are doing best because the unions will not trust you because they may lose their case. Their strikes will be declared illegal. The employers will not have trust in us because they will just be throwing their workers out and we will declare their um, termination and dismissal as either wrongful or unfair termination, right? And then government may also not trust us because we will pin them to their word. We will enforce it against them because sometimes they promise we are going to do this. We, um, time is up for negotiation. Mm. They will negotiate. And so at least every, it tells you that we are doing our work. If one party was accusing us mm. and others were happy, you understand, then you can see that there's an element of bias or you could suspect. Mm -hmm. But where all the parties are saying, so, and at what time do they complain? The employers will complain when they lose. The unions will complain when they lose. Sometimes they are happy. They've been praising us sometimes, you know. When they are happy, I, my, so that mm -hmm. is it. There are cases that we have intervened, and they are happy with us. They come congratulating us. They come to our office. They say, oh, Mr. Chairman, we thank you for uh, the decision you have made, the mm -hmm. directive. This has been given the wisdom of Solomon. And they shower all the praises. I see. But when it goes against them, that is where. So it is, not, it is not the case that uh, National Labor Commission is doing the business. We have of a government. case of CLOSAG. No, hang on. Civil and local government. I'll, I'll hear they, that CLOSAG okay, case. Right. But so, so what you're telling us today is that it's not, a, it's not the case that the National Labor Commission is doing the bidding of government when it comes to public sector uh, issues, labor issues. You see, we are unable to do that because if you look at the composition of the commission, the commission has seven members, right? Government nominates two. Labor nominates two. And then employers will also nominate two. Mm -hmm. Adding up to six. And the chairman of the commission, who precise over the sitting adjudication and arbitration is nominated by labor and employers coming together. So in effect, government has two, and the two of them have two and a half, two and a half. Mm. Assuming you could divide the person into two. Well, the two of them will nominate the chairman eh, who presides over it. So if you have quite a bigger number than what government has, mm. right? How can they do the bill of government? But who funds, who funds the Labor Commission? Oh, the Labor Commission is funded by government. By government? Yes. So then you can understand why people... No, why, think what, what is the funding? The funding that government provides for the members is sitting allowance. They are not paying salaries. And even their, their allowances, it is pegged on how many times you come to sit. If you don't come today, you will not be paid. They are paid wages. It's like paying wages. You are paid when you come. So how can... And so, look, so that's, that's, that's for members. No, right? that that's is for, for members. members. But the Labor Commission has an office itself. No, the, the, the commission, we, mm -hmm. are, we are the secretariat. I'm the head of the secretariat. Mm -hmm. And we provide support service and logistics. We don't decide on cases. The cases are decided on by the seven members who are nominated by the trapartite. Me. I don't give decisions. Mm -hmm. Right? If you see my signature and any, under anything, it's a an cover letter eh, following the attack to the decision that has been given by the members of the commission. So if the government is paying me, as you mean they pay me like the governor of Bank of Ghana, I don't sit on, if you bring your case, I don't decide on it. Mm. It is the commission, it is either the commissioners or the arbitrators or the mediators. How do we get the arbitrators and the mediators? The arbitrators and the mediators are not staff of the commission. You see, arbitrators give an award, which is like a decision mm -hmm. or this. And they are not staff of the commission. We have registered arbitrators. You, if you are a trained arbitrator and you qualify, you come and register with the commission. We take you through a course. So we have the list of, let's say, about 300 people. You have a case with... Um, TV3. You come before the commission. We look at the case and say, well, we are referring this case to a, an arbitration voluntarily. You agree. Then we give you the list. About 400 people. Mm -hmm. So you will look through and say that I am choosing um, Kujua Samoa, right? Uh -huh. And two others. Then TV3 will also do what? Choose from it. 
If you happen to choose the same persons, then they are given to you. Failure for you to agree, right, on same mediator or mediators, then the commission will assist you by appointing from the list. And you can disagree mm. with whoever is giving you. So that, and those mediators and arbitrators who will sit on the case and give the award are not paid by government. They are paid by you, the parties. So at what time will the government come in? Mm. The government is not paying the people who are sitting on your case. You are not dealing with the government. So at what time will government do? Or, you, or the arbitrators... That, I mean, that's, that's why what, you, what you're saying. Yes. Um, the teacher union sat here with me and talked about how you know, unions have lost confidence in the Labour Commission, and uh, you know they think that you back a lot but don't bite. Um, I wonder what your reaction is is to that. You see, recently I think was it they, they were complaining that we were doing the we had done we were favouring government. Now, government owed the members some money, right? They had agreed that they were going to be paid in I think three or four instalments. In one case, one installment was, let's say, 3,000. Another was 12,000, right? Let's say 9,000. They are not the real figures, let's say now. Government says that we will want to pay. Uh -huh. However, instead of the, let's say, three months, give us four months to pay. They have three, 12, and nine to pay at each point in time. Then Tewu can say, yes, no, you said three months, so you should start from, uh, what do you call it, the first MPS. Then the first is, let's say, 3,000. Then the commission looks at it and says that, okay, if you say you want government, you want four months mm. to pay, then we are not going to give, let you pay the, uh, choose the 3,000. You are going to choose what? The 12,000 and pay within the, MP within the four months. This was it. We were able to get that. And Tehu says, no. We said in the first, the first one is uh, 3,000. The second is nine. Is, so if, if you have not paid the 3,000, you cannot jump and go and pay the second one because this is the arrangement. The commission knew the arrangement. It's three, nine. Mm. But if you say you need four months, then you will not pay the first one. Go and pay the second one, which was nine. Were we fair or unfair? It was just one month. You're going to wait for another three months, which is six months I see. before you get it. You see, so sometimes... It's a lack of understanding of issues. Sometimes it's a lack of understanding of... An appreciation of what... You see, sometimes people come and they have made their mind already. Now, I was just referring to the case of uh, Closer. Where they threatened strike. I'll just call them and said, uh, you threaten strike, you have to, you have to do we are negotiating. You see, sometimes when people, we give them the time and they negotiate and they are successful, mm. nobody comes. It's like winning Luto. It is only when people stick and they don't win. That is what we hear. But when they win, they are afraid that they will mention for people to come and ask them for. So we well, they, I mean, they have told us cases when they won. For instance, in the you know last agita last few agitations that we've we've seen, uh, when the the uh, issues ten demands were condensed into six, some of them were even dealt with. Uh, you during, look at this uh, Utah, Utah strike around the um, January third mm -hmm. over research allowance and the um, interim market eh? mm -hmm. allowance that has been solved. It's been have, solved. You, have you heard of it again? But at that time, you say, no, when they come <laughs> here, you heard of uh, the Senior Staff Association of the Investors on the failure to implement the negotiated mm -hmm. salaries. It came before the commission. At that time, they also said, no, no, we don't understand. We are going on strike. Mm -hmm. I told you of the civil service. Yes. And several of them. That have all get, been you, dealt with. You, Several but you them. still have some outstanding issues. Oh, they are bad. For as long as we are human beings, they will always For come. as long as there is an employer and employee, you, they have, will, they you have outstanding yeah. issues. But I did want to take you back on something you said. When there is a dispute between government as the employer and, you know, public sector workers, the first instance is for, you know, mediation. And, and that is... No, we allow them... We look at the... When it comes... If it's a, one of a collective bargaining agreement, mm -hmm. issues are right though. We let them go see that, yes, look, take your agreement and see that this and try to look at what the, 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 the grounds you have set for yourself in dispute resolution and follow up. 
If they are unable, then we bring them for facilitation. We have trained personnel at the industrial relations. And they have department. those grounds in their contracts with the government? No, I'm, talk, I'm, I'm speaking in respect yeah. to public no. sector workers. Mm -hmm. Okay. So they, they have an issue. Say, you know, any they have an issue with have the an government. Issue with government like, we, like we are going to renew our collective agreement every two years. Mm -hmm. And it is two years. And it has not been renewed. And they have called on government, and government is delaying. They bring it before the commission. We will then prompt government through the minister, sector minister, that this is what we have before the commission, right? So we at that to, point, you're being a mediator? Yes. As, as Labor Commission? We are not mediators at the time. We are facilitating settlement. You're, so when that fails? It is only when that fails, then we will refer the case to, to mediation. To arbitrators no, or medi mediators. mediation? Mediation. That mediation, from, who yeah. does the mediation? Yes, we have a list of certified mediators who I are see. not staff of the who commission. Who are not staff of the commission. Okay. So all you do is facilitate. We facilitate. Engagements between yes. the employer and yes. the... So it is I the see. parties who will select the mediator they can trust to mediate on the case. And the mediator is not even paid by the government or the commission. It is paid by the parties. So you see, at every point in time, I don't see how the government can come in and interfere or influence the outcome. You and I have a problem, right? We are unable to settle. It goes before the commission. The commission gets a facilitator. Mm -hmm. That is, the facilitators are staff there to assist you, I mean, to look at your agreement to see if you can negotiate a settlement. Where you are unable, then you are allowed to bring in a mediator. Mm -hmm. The mediator, all that the commission does is to give you the list of the mediators. And you and I will agree on a common mediator, right? I might select Professor Kwashiga, which is agreeable to you. Mm -hmm. So from the beginning, the two of us have trust in Professor Kwashiga in handling the matter. Right. Right. So that the outcome will be acceptable to us after we, we nominated him. Mm -hmm. So where would the government... So if at the end of mediation, it goes against you, will you blame the government? Will you blame the National Labor Commission? You see, so the perception yeah. out there is some people think that the mediators, the arbitrators, or anybody associated with this um, resolution mm -hmm. is a member of the commission. Yeah. That is why they make all that allegation. That is not right. I, I, I want us to talk about uh, the contentious tier two payments when we come back. Don't go away. In the studio with me today is Executive Secretary for the National Labor Commission, Fusua Samoa. We've been having an engagement on the NLC's role in labor agitations in the country. He's been explaining quite a bit to us on, you know, some of the misgivings about what they are able and not unable to do. We'll continue the conversation now, uh, Mr. Samoa, on the contentious subject of Tier 2 pension payments, which, which has caused aspects of um, public sector workers to strike and threaten strike. Uh, right now we are hearing that they say on May 2, they will go on strike. Which people? Oh, I, I, I can, of, of course, I can share that with you. So it says, organized labor has warned of a potential strike on May 2 if government fails to fulfill its obligation to pay their tier two uh, pension of its members. And this is in reference to uh, the Secretary General of the TUC. Yeah. Yes, I remember the case of tier two, came before the commission where I think some sectors, especially I think among the university teachers or the administrators also, where the deductions were made and were not paid to the fund managers. The commission looked at it and came out with that it was wrong. That tier two could not be deducted or taken from people's salary and not be paid to the fund managers. Because when one goes on pension after taking the SNIT, um they said, we are going to take this sum from your pension, uh, the fund managers. Mm -hmm. And you see, the delay in the payment of the money to the fund managers is going to affect the pensioners. Because the monies are supposed to be invested, right? And then the returns or whatever profit that is made on it accrued is given to the contributors. Right. So that it was wrong for the government or the employer to take as much as over 10 months without paying. Mm -hmm. And the commission gave the directive that it should be paid. 
I remember, I think that someone, I thought that someone appeared because yeah. we hauled them before mm -hmm. the commission mm -hmm. and they gave the assurance that they were going to pay. So, you see, in this case, if it is true that it has not been paid, especially where the commission has given this directive and people will want to strike over it, once they write to the commission, I don't think that the commission can hold them not to strike mm. or not to press on them. You see? I see, but sometimes you see one thing is that where the commission gives a directive mm, and it is not complied with, the commission will have to go to court and seek enforcement. Mm -hmm. Right now, you come before the commission and we say you are entitled to some benefits, so TV3 should pay you within seven days or 14 days mm -hmm. or whatever period that is given. If it is not paid, right, you don't declare a strike. But we sitting in the commission will not know what has happened here. It is for you to write to the commission or inform the commission, right, that the judgment data, which is your employer, has not followed the directive, has not complied. Then we will go to court and seek enforcement. But you see, in most cases, we give a directive that you are entitled to this, government should give you this, or your employer should give you this. When it is not done, then people resort to strike. Right? When you resort to strike, that will be unlawful. That is I mean, at that point, why is it unlawful? Because they had come before the Labour Commission. Yes. And, uh, you know, an agreement was reached, yes. but it was not complied, fulfilled, yes. complied with. And so they decided to... A employ another in that let me take let have. me take you to the court where the court gives a decision or a directive and it is not complied with right mm -hmm. um the judgment creditor or whoever has won what do you do you go, you go to, to court, court and seek enforcement indeed right so the court sometimes the court will give you a belief and a police mm -hmm. to go and collect the person's property mm -hmm. and it is sold I mean, and it in, is paid. In, in, in the case where of the you court. Sometimes where the court is, when it is not done, the person is cited for contempt and the court will let the person purge his or her contempt by performing it or throwing the person to prison or imposing a fine. You see, there are means of executing a directive, a, a judgment of a court. In the same way in the commission, the law provides for the means of execution of our directive, which is not complied with. The law says that we should go to court and what enforce it, mm -hmm. which we have been doing. That's what that, that, that is on the part yes. of the Labour Commission. Yes. But also, uh, we know that one of the tools that have been given to uh, you know Labour to drum home demands is is the industrial action, which is the yes. You know, I'm not one saying one of which is the strike. I'm not saying that. I'm not outlawing the industrial action. I'm and also I'm not, not saying you are yes, outlawing. Yes. What I'm saying and is I'm that, not saying, But no, the thing, on, there are on. steps to it. There are steps. They have taken the steps and got to a point where their employer decided not to heed their calls. So they say, okay, let's look into our bags and see whatever tool we have. One of those tools is to strike. One of the other tools is also to come to the Labor Commission. They don't talk in it. Before you strike, you must come to the Commission. The commission has given you a directive. No, before it you has strike, not got, got, at the point mm -hmm. there hasn't been any form of um, engagement mm -hmm. between employer and a third party, between employer, a third party, and the and the uh, employee. Mm -hmm. Then I think you have a point. But after that engagement has taken place, I don't think the law says that they have to, by all means, come back to you for uh, uh, enforcement. What did you say? The labor commission gave a directive, mm -hmm. right? That the tier two, I'm just using the tier two um, in payments, yes. which has not been made to the fund managers, eh, must be paid, right? They will give 14 days. It is not paid, right? What happens? The complainants will have to inform the commission, right, that University of Ghana is just, I'm only using that. Mm -hmm have not paid the tier two that was deducted from their staff within the 14 days as directed by the commission. Mm -hmm. Then the commission will proceed to court, right, to have them comply with the directive. But if you sit there and say that because you said you should pay and you have not paid, we are going on strike, that would be wrong. Is it wrong in the face of the law? Because what I'm... Yes. Which part of the law says that? Unfortunately, I don't, I don't have my this in here, but um, that is it. 
The law says that enforcement is done by the commission. You don't enforce your own decision. No, decision. They, no, no, they're not, they are not enforcing. But yeah, they are also they are also employing tools of engagement here. To do what? To make sure that their their demands are met. And and what is the demand? No, no, is no. The, no, no, me, me, the me, demand me. is to enforce the directive of the commission. Because the commission has said this thing should be done for no, you. No, 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 it no. has not been done. So you want to force the person to do it. That is why you are going on strike. So in, in effect, you are employing a dangerous tool for the enforcement of the directive. By that, you are saying that Labour doesn't have the right to do, to do what they have said they plan to do. I'm not saying that they have no right to yeah, do So that. as much as you are not they, saying they that, have the, the point I'm making is... They have the right... But it, they must follow the process. Again, I'd like to see which you part go, of the law... You go to church. No, hang on. I'd like to see which <laughs> part of the law says that after they have come to the Labour Commission, if it's not met, they still have to come back to you and before they are able to um, embark on a strike. But no, no, you see, no, don't, no, if you, you, you are making it look simple, that is why I started by taking you through the court. The court gives an order. Right, that I, Mr. Samuel, oh, I've I told you that the court, I, the court does not give any other option apart from that. Because if you go and do something else outside of the court for enforcement, you yourself will fall foul of the law. Yes, but in the case see, of in that, the case of labor negotiations, <laughs> you see, in the case of labor negotiations, you have options besides that what is, you are saying. That is why the law says that we should go to. You see, we are a commission, right? More or less, um, an administrative tribunal. Uh -huh. or an inferior body when it comes to this. We don't have the powers of enforcement. Like in the court, they can cite you for contempt. Yes. The court can say, believes, go and pick up his things and sell, right? That is why people fear that. But we, because we are not the judiciary, uh -huh. if the law provides that, when we say something and it is not complied with, we should go to the high court. Then the high court will give the order of compliance, mm -hmm. failure of which you are either in contempt, right, or other sanctions may apply. So, so they, so if they are supposed to receive this, which we have directed, yes, you deserve it. So here's my question to you: Again. At what point will, will it be legal for them to declare a strike? After the, after they have informed us that we want to go on a strike because they haven't because done this, it's, and then we fail to act. But if they inform us... After they inform you, they still have to wait for you to act. But you see, there are, but why, why would the law say that give us seven, give seven days notice? No, Mr. Samuel, it is, it again, is, again, I want you to understand not where just, I'm coming from. It is from. not just a term of art. I, it is giving this, space this, for this, something to be done. No, hang on. This tier two issue, mm -hmm. at this point, is not at the first level of dispute, no. for, so to speak. Because it has, they have it, gone, has, it has gone beyond the final... Thank it you. has been decided on. It has been decided it, yes. on. So when you say that they still have to come to you, the National Labour Commission, you see, I have you not, to act I, on again I before have, they can no, declare see, a strike. I have not. I'd like to find where it says hold, in the Hold law. on, I have not seen what you are telling me, uh -huh. right? But assuming that I received a letter, right? But now that you have told me, when I go, I will look at it. Okay. Assuming I have received a notice uh -huh. that they will want to declare a strike because. The decision of the commission has not been enforced. The next thing I'm going to do is to call the director of legal, okay. who is in charge of enforcement. I call for the docket that this decision has been given or directive has been given by the commission, mm -hmm. right? On 13th March, mm -hmm. the employers were supposed to follow the directive or comply with within 10 days. Today is 19th April. Mm -hmm which is past the 14 days. Please, proceed to court and enforce it. Okay, so the clarity I'm seeking is, while you are doing that, from the labor perspective, they could go on strike. When, when they are, In reference to this when particular they are, when, they, when their petition is receiving attention, you go on strike. We send a case to court the case to enforce your decision for you. And when the court is hearing the case or is pending for them, you go on strike. So, you uh, don't so, do that. So, that is against the so law. So again, it comes, it comes back to the question. At what point will it be legal, particularly in this tier two pensions issue, for them to be able to say we are striking and National Labor Commission will not call them out for it? If they give us the notice uh -huh. that the compliance has not been done, 
Okay. And within the period of the seven days, Labor Commission is inactive. They can proceed on the strike. Okay. All right. I understand. Because we are supposed to enforce. So as soon as we realize that we are not doing mm -hmm. it, then you can resort to strike. I see. Yes. We, we know that you uh, had a meeting on Wednesday with aspects of... Um, the teacher know, unions. The, yeah, with, yes. with, with, with Labor. Talk to us about that. How far with the negotiations? Are we getting somewhere? Oh, yes. They are getting somewhere, you know. When they declared the strike, of course, we did enough. For, we went to court mm -hmm. and then we injuncted them. So we held them before the commission together with um, their employers. So we gave them, we looked at the issues and they said the government was dragging its feet. Mm -hmm. They were not meeting them. So the commission ordered that the government should meet them and settle the issues and report to the commission within one week. So they went initially, um, the government representation was as bad as before. But within the one week, before they came to the commission, they had held four meetings, right? And on the Wednesday, another meeting was scheduled for the Wednesday at 4 p.m., which was going to be five. Mm -hmm. Five meetings in one week. So, of course, we saw that, yes, some attempt had been made. And then the government said, side said that, yes, some, at the time when they were dragging their feet, they needed, some, uh, they needed mandate. Right, to mm -hmm. be able to negotiate on certain issues because they were financial. Mm -hmm. Though they were employees of the Ghana Education Service, whatever they were going to agree on was financial. So it involves the Ministry of Finance and the Fair Wages and Salaries Commission. But the ultimate was the Ministry of Finance. Because if I go and negotiate something on behalf of TV3, which was going to financially commit TV3, I should have a mandate from the management or the finance department to say that if you agree, on two CDs or three CDs, we are able to pay before you go and agree on some 10 CDs to throw the thing out of budget. Now, the finance minister and his deputy, mm -hmm. the director of budget, uh, sorry, his deputy in charge of budget, Abraham, are out of the country, right? In far away in the US, they are attending the spring conference, they call it, mm -hmm. you know, to do with this IMF. IMF. Mm -hmm. So they needed the mandate to negotiate and agree on something which they were not getting. Right. But thankfully, on Wednesday morning, the minister gave the mandate for them to negotiate. So, uh, sorry, on Wednesday. Mm. So at the time they came before the commission, the mandate had come in the morning. So they, both parties agreed that now that the mandate has come, commission, give us two more weeks to go and continue with negotiations. After all, we started with about 17 and it's been narrowed to six. So about 11, they've made progress. Mm -hmm. So the commission gave them two weeks, which ends on the 2nd of May. Mm. So on the 2nd so of I May... So I guess that's why they are already hinting again that... That what? The teachers have also started hinting that uh, they are not happy with how negotiations are going and that... They, After they, Wednesday? They could also, they could also go on. No, that, go was, on that was before Wednesday. When they, it was before Wednesday. It but, was before so you think right now they are happy? Oh, they are very happy. I spoke to two of their leaders this morning. I see. Of the three. They are very happy. Very and well. I spoke to the technical advisor to the minister, who is also part of the negotiation. So mm. things are happening. You know, we have been following. Mm. You know, the teachers, but they, they are about 30%. The six, the six left are the key issues for them. That is why they are doing the six in two weeks. They did 11 in one week. Mm -hmm. But the six, they are doing They are going weeks. to do, do that, that in <laughs> yes, two weeks. Yes, yes. Okay. Uh, I mean, w one of the things they've all, one of the impressions also created um, by organized labor is the fact that government has, isn't being fair to them in a number of issues. Uh, from where you sit as a facilitator of disputes, is government being unfair to uh, organized labor, to the teachers, to the nurses? Uh, I'm very hesitant to answer this, but in most cases, the government has not done its bit. That I must say, I mean, sometimes, I mean, but you know, it's all financial, and uh, yeah, in most cases, mm. case that government has not done its bit, you know, less we are going to pay um, interim market premium, its time is not paid, but you know, wherever you see the government feeling, most of them is financial. I don't defeat that one. I must say, most times they don't do their bit. I see. They don't do their bit. And, and do you tell governments that they don't do oh, their yes. bit? Yes. But for that, I will sit here and say, sitting here, everybody is listening to me. Mm. Government, government is listening to me. Everybody is listening to me. And that is it. It's on record. 
so when you tell governments that listen you're not doing your bit what kind of response do you get from uh, you know oh they wake up they, they wake up and negotiate <laughs> they negotiate they negotiate and they are able to settle like i said you see most of the time what i have realized mm. is where you see government dragging its feet most of the time is financial you know what we have gone through this um, they talk about COVID. of course People say government uses that as an excuse, mm -hmm. but you and I are witness that we all stayed home for one month. We were paid, and Mr. Samuel, it's, 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 it's even even as husbands and fathers, sometimes in the house when we drag our feet, not that we don't love our children or our wives, but you see, if, Samuel, if the money is there, we'll give you everything. It seems like you're sympathizing with government. I but 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 you you should be an unbiased arbiter or, or facilitator. No, 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 no. In I am space. not. If I'm sympathizing with government. I will not tell you what I'm saying that they don't do their bit. Mm -hmm. I would say, oh, government has no, But you, you are also justifying why they I am not. Ju I'm their... telling you what they tell us. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you what they. I am also a worker. Mm -hmm. One day I will go on pension. Assuming I went on pension, going for my tier two, mm -hmm. and they said all the monies that were deducted were not paid. You think mm -hmm. I'll be a happy man? Yeah? I care about the future, I care about my friendship. Mm. So some things like that, I don't joke with it. Is Why would I sympathize with the government to deduct my money? What is government? Why is government my child or my baby or my father or my uncle? We are all working. And you see, one thing people, who is the government? Sometimes people want to think as if the government is the politician, the president sitting there. Well, in this context, or, we are referring to those who are running affairs right now. You think those working at the Ministry of mm. Finance, eh? Who have to work on this? And are they also not going pen on pension? Or well, you think they have some money somewhere? You see, so sometimes people want to narrow down government to some president. This time, the news, and the president and his vice, they don't take. Sometimes they don't even come here at all. Mm. There are things that the president may not even know. I'm sure. Mm. You see, he can know everything. I see. So sometimes. It's you and I, are, our own people sitting at the Ministry of Finance, sitting at the Education and this thing. Even sometimes the secretaries. You will go and look for somebody um, and then the secretary will tell you, do you have an appointment? He is busy. I see. Meanwhile, the, the, the boss is there, sitting there doing nothing, reading some fan magazine. The secretary will not even go in to check. Me, I have been to some offices. My own colleagues, their secretaries, I went to office, I don't know. Oh, uh, he's busy. Uh -huh. The man wasn't busy. I sat there for about four hours. So I just picked my phone and called. Uh -huh. ah, I've been at your place for four hours, uh, almost four and a half hours. He said, you are busy. What meeting are you holding? He says, me busy. What am I doing? And then he came out. And you know the secretary says, he says, I didn't have an appointment. Interesting. Look at this a useless excuse. I didn't have an appointment. Meanwhile, there was... Uh, what we call it, a threatening strike mm. in his sector, and I wanted to notify which, which him. sector minister is this? Which ministry? Is I, that? I don't want to talk about it now. Okay, you wanted to notify him about the strike yes. in the sector, yes, and it happened mm. because of that thing. The strike happened, I see, and we had to move his ministry, we had to bring in the, the what we call, ministry of interior, the IGP, and everything. Yes, we had to go there. Mr. Samuel, we'll talk a bit more about the challenges you face as a commission. But is government owing you tier two pension contributions? I don't know. You don't check? I have not checked mine. Is that an honest response? Yes, I haven't checked. You, why not? You don't care whether or not your uh, contributions are being paid? Well, I care, but... Uh, it, must have, it must have crossed your mind when you started looking into the labor issues that, hey, tier two pensions are not being paid. Yes, but I have not checked. Mm -hmm. But perhaps I'll check from here. you check from here. When we come back a bit more on the challenges, don't go away. Welcome back to Hot Issues with me, Kemini Amano. My guest today is Mr. Fusua Samwa. He is Executive Secretary for the National Labor Commission. Mr. Samwa, thank you for your patience. Now, I, I want us to go a bit more into your challenges. Your challenges are much more than what you have described uh, with, with oh, this accessing is the, the, some the, of the sector ministers. Yeah. Yes. Uh, but you also have issues That, that with is resources. not too much of a challenge. 
So what are your biggest challenges? Our biggest challenge is um, financial resources okay. for the commission. And the um, clearance to engage is all about this finance. Mm -hmm. Because um, we are a commission. We have offices in Accra, Tema, Takrade, mm -hmm. uh, Kumasi. We have acquired an office in the um, Sunyane. We want to open. It's been there for about a year mm -hmm. or more. We haven't got financial clearance to recruit. So anybody who has a case in the whole of the northern, right away to the uh, Brown Half region, uh, the, all the three Brown regions, who have to come to Kumasi or Accra. I see. Assuming you worked with somebody and you have been unfairly terminated, or you have salaries or wages unpaid, mm. which is about 1,000 cities or 2,000 cities, can you travel to Accra to come and complain? So there is a need that we be resourced to open offices. In all the regions, the law provides that we should open offices in the regions and the districts. But here we are. Mm. We're talking about this enforcement. That is why sometimes people want to resort to strike. Until recently, we had only one lawyer. I see. Sometimes we advertise... <laughs> People don't apply, and those who apply, you give them the appointment, they will even come when they see the conditions of service. Mm. So we need to better our conditions of service. That is one. Mm. Two, we need clearance to engage people to work. You understand? And then we need resources. We just have three motorbikes, which, you know, we have to save. And see, everything that we do is free. Mm -hmm. We don't charge. You come and file your complaint, is free. We hear your case, is free. It is only when you engage a mediator or arbitrator where you have to pay. The commission will have to do a summary hearing for you, is free. We have to go to court and enforce the decisions. We do it for you for free. But we pay filing fees and we engage lawyers, you see. And it all involves money. Mm. Going around to do service, you bring a case against your employer who is in Amasaman. We have to go and serve Atamasama. When you go to the court and you file your case, you pay for service fees, mm, the beliefs. Mm -hmm. But in our place, it's free. So we have to engage our own beliefs, provide the means of transport to do the service. And they have to go there as many times as possible to get the person served. So our fuel is a problem. Means of transport is a problem. We had three motorbikes, two are broken down. So imagine, and we receive about an average of about 120 cases in every month. Mm. So if we have to go and serve 120 people with even three motorbikes, out of which two are out of order down, what do we do? Come to our vehicles. Where are they? We have one pickup in Accra and one saloon car, which was crashed last two weeks by some distance. It's currently at, um, what do you call it, Japan Motors, Nizan. Yeah. So we have one car in this system. So we really need the logistics. <laughs> and uh, it's Samuel, all about release of money, which we are not getting regularly. And, and it brings me to the question. When was the last time you received subvention? Oh, we've got our first quarter. Got I think the second quarter ceilings have come. It is not the time you release, but the quantum of money that comes. How much do you get? I don't know the ceilings for now, but they are not enough. We went for training in um, Egypt on conflict management, right, and negotiation. That was somewhere in November. We had to pre-finance it ourselves. Mm. So, so it's for the commission. On whose Ma pocket? Because the uh, commission does not make money from any of the cases that you attend. No, no, no. That is the money that are, we are giving money for training. Uh -huh. It's part of the budget. Okay. But it has not been released. Yeah, you say so you have I, to pre-finance yes, it. Yes, you have to pre-finance it. Where did the commission get the money to pre-finance it? No, it's not the... Oh. The persons going for the training will have to pre-finance. Individually? Because the monies are not released. Mm. For well, the commission to pay you later when monies are released. Oh. When you think about it, if you were an employer, uh, would you empower uh, the 
organization where your employee your employees can take you to when they are unhappy that is the irony that's the irony mm -hmm. but government is not the old you see and that is why sometimes i encourage other members of the trap type you see it is not that government wouldn't want to resource the commission mm -hmm. right me i've been mp before i've been a deputy minister and I've been in this country. I know when it comes to government funding, mm -hmm. it's very difficult. You and I, how many people pay tax in this country? Property rate, how many people are paying? It is you and I who pay tax. Those who sell cocoa and other things in the night, Kelly Willie and I, don't they make money than what you and I get? The watching now is watching, the, do they pay tax? How many people who trade in the night? You know, there's a night market in Zungu. Mm -hmm. Mr. Hey, people, people are not paying tax. Mr. Samuel, and that, that is where government gets its money, mm -hmm. right? So what about the rest of the trapper type? The unions, is it, is it the time? employers. Can't they also support the commission? And, and brings me to the question. Yes. Is it, is it time private sector employers also contributed to the running of the Labor Commission? That is my belief. And I've been writing to them. And mm. I've been telling them at any forum, including here, that if we have to rely on government for everything, then I don't think things will change. We are going to be where we are. It might even get worse. You know, when governments come, governments go. Now MPP is campaigning. NDC is campaigning. Mm -hmm. What are they saying? We will build hospitals. We will build stadia. We will build roads. Have you said, have you heard any of them saying that we, we will develop the National Labor Commission? It is not a flagship program. It is not a priority. <laughs> and when it comes to election, what do you and I look for? We look for how many kilometers of road that were made. Indeed. We look for how many hospitals that were. So you see, the governments know that they will be judged by roads, hospitals, schools, and not the performance of the commission. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, you and I, we should even prioritize the work of the commission mm. first. Because in case something happens to you, mm. in case you are thrown out of here, in case your tier two pension and other things that are deducted are not paid, yes. in case you are sexually harassed Goes in this office, so in I case you are unfairly this... treated, the Labour Labour Commission is your first point of call. So the silence of, you know, the other members of the Trapatite Committee... The silence of the other tra members of the Trapatite is killing, right? And aiding the government to do perhaps what it is doing. What is it? It's and it is not the Trapatite. And even you and I, how many times... We spent by 5 a.m. Radio stations have started discussion. To 10 o'clock, everybody is doing politics. Newspaper review. Even when the newspapers that are on the market, when you want to review it, they say there must be an MPP representative and an NDC representative. Mm -hmm. Is that not it? Mr. Samuel, you don't look for the academia experts oh, we or do. The media. We, we but, do. But Mr. Samuel, there's always a third party. No discussion will go on without party representation. So that is what we wanted. That is what we are getting. Some discussions go on without them. Would you consider political mm. interference a challenge, you know, when it comes to the commission's work? Not at all. There's no political No political party has ever interfered in, to the best of my knowledge. Mm. Not at all. Not at all. I see. Mr. Samuel, How would you do that? Who would you see? Is it the labor people, the employers, or government, or myself? I, I wish I could answer that question, but I don't Anyway, politicians know. don't bring cases there. We deal with labor issues. We don't deal with political cases. Yes, but if, if uh, you know, government is occupied by people, you can consider politicians. But, the, but, the, in the, but the teachers and the cases. university teachers okay. who are being indeed, cheated, indeed, they me, all belong to parties. We'll, we'll not make an argument of that. No, no, no. We'll not I, make an argument as of political. that. You said no, we'll leave it at yes, that. Yes, okay. a very big no. Okay. But, I, but I, I, I want us to look at how the political parties also engage themselves in uh, labor issues. Um, they seem to attach themselves to labor a lot when they, we are heading to the elections. Now, labor, uh, organized labor is saying we want to contribute to their manifestos. Could that be the starting point of finding a solution to the unending disputes we see? Yes. In fact, I think that is strategic. 
and that is very good of the organized labor, wanting to contribute to the manifestos of the years. You see, like you see, every party or every government comes to power, and we want to implement its party's manifesto. It is the manifesto that tells you what they will want to do when they come to power. That is where they want to say, we want to build rules, we want to do. So if organized labor is coming in, mm -hmm. then they will also want to question what you will do for them, right, mm -hmm. when you come to power. So I think that it is only, and that is when you and I, that, that is the commission, will become relevant mm -hmm. or be given an attention. Because yes, organized labor knows that whenever there is a dispute, whenever they have a problem, they have to turn to the commission, right? So if organized labor is now going to contribute or interrogate the manifestos of the various parties, then I'm sure that the National Labor Commission will have a place. I see. Mr. Samoa, if government were to do something about the financing, what would be an optimal budget for the Labor Commission? I think uh, we should be getting about 30 million. 30 million CDs? Yeah. Per annum? Yes. That, that would be good. I see. We'll leave it here. Thank you so much it's for joining us here on Hot Issues. It's a pleasure. And thank you too for watching us uh, in this episode of Hot Issues with me, Kevin Yaman. I hope to see you here same time next week. Bye-bye.